Hey everybody, Blue Goblin here to review the three-part mini-series of Cataclysm Ultimate X-Men. Uh, I know I'm supposed to be reviewing the five-part mini-series of Cataclysm itself, but I wanted to go ahead and talk about this mini-series first. Uh, I gotta say, this mini-series, this three-issue mini-series was actually really, really impressive. I, I liked almost everything about it. The writing was good. The artwork was incredibly good, and just the storytelling, the emotional parts of the storytelling was really damn good, and add to that the enormous amounts of action we get in here, it was just truly a phenomenal three-part story. Now, granted, it's not the greatest story in the world, no, but for what I get, I was pleasantly surprised by how good it was. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail in each issue. I'm just going to review this three-parter as a whole. You know, it starts off with uh, um, with uh, the X-Men after the fallout of what happened between Kitty Pride and Jean Grey and the whole TN storyline, the whole World War X. Now, Kitty and Jean are not in this story. This is what's going on with Storm's team of X-Men. Basically, you got Rogue, you got the the guy who can control the plants, you got Iceman, uh, Jimmy Hudson, who is Wolverine's son, uh, yeah, you got Storm, uh, you got uh, Mach 2, the uh, teenage... Basically a Magneto if Magneto was a teenage girl. <laughs> Who I really like. I actually really like Mach 2 and I hope to see more of her in future Ultimate Comics. They come across another group of mutants that survived the fallout of World War X. They come across Strong Guy, you know, good old Guido, the Ultimate Comics version of him. Come across Amp, Beak... And uh, this is where they find Pixie. Now they find, only also find a, a, a guy called Silence, I believe. You know, he, you know, he doesn't speak, but he can calm things down. Now they find these mutants after they see Galactus and everything. And turn, this is where they find Pixie. Pixie see, wakes up and sees Galactus, and she freaks out and accidentally teleports this, the the team of X Men into a pocket universe. And it's not going so well. And this is where they come across uh, Rick Jones, a.k.a. Captain Marvel, a former Nova in the Ultimate uh, Marvel Universe, who is you know, now is now Captain Marvel. And when they run into him in this pocket universe, of course, there's some obnoxious dialogue in here. You know, he's like, hey, man, it's been... You know, they, they meet Captain Marvel, and one of the first things he asks is like, oh, is there... Is there a burger joint still on Earth? Because I'm craving a burger and fries. He says something like that. It's really silly sometimes, some of the dialogue in here. But but the main focus is still there. The storytelling, the good action, the good drama. Uh, you know, Jones talks about the the Destroyer or Galactus. He... It's, you know, he talks about Galactus, but it's spelled a little differently in this book, in this series. And there's a bunch of little droids buzzing around, kind of like, you know, this big droid bug army and everything. And it's like, consume, consume, consume. And this is where the action really picks up and really gets good. We see some awesome moments in here, but to me, the character that truly shines in this three-parter is Rogue. Rogue is done very, very well in here. I was pleasantly impressed by how well how well a character she was done. She gets a little bit reckless here and there in this in this series, but she really stretches the limits of her powers in this, and it's really impressive to see just how far she's willing to go to protect people because she promised everybody that nobody's going to die here 
And we also see a really awesome moment from Mach 2 in here. Very, very awesome. You know, Amp helps amplify her magnetic powers, and she takes a swarm of these Galactus droid bug things, or whatever they're called, and she's able to combine them all into a big ball and smash them. It's just a really, really awesome moment for Mach 2. And, uh, you know, Pixie wakes up, and she's, like, she's fully rested, and she's just about ready to teleport when she gets gutted in the... when she gets gutted by one of the one of the droid bugs and this is where rogue snaps rogue realizes they're in a losing fight and she just snaps not to mention jimmy you know wolverine's son he gets infected by one of these bugs and he basically becomes one you know consume 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 and this is where rogue snaps she uses her powers and makes an army of one, as she calls it, and absorbs everyone's powers, and she becomes like this one ginormous super being with everyone's powers. But there's a downside to what what happens with her. It unfortunately uh, makes her full of nothing but rage, and she's just going on pure rage and just destroying all these bots. Yet they're at a dilemma. They're at a dilemma. Now, I'm not going to ruin how this series ends. But what I will say is that Pixie didn't die when she was stabbed by the bug. But uh, there's something that Pixie does in here that's very commendable and very brave before she actually dies and unfortunately there's a double-sided ending to this the team makes it out but at a big cost and that's where I'm gonna leave it this three-parter was really really good and it it leads right into the main story of Cataclysm you know usually tie-ins and miniseries connected to a main story you know sometimes they pay off and sometimes they don't but this one in my opinion does indeed pay off it is well worth your time to check this out and read it you know it's like if this comes out as part of a trade as part of a cataclysm trade then I definitely think it'd be worth your time to give it a look and just read some awesome action some awesome drama some very emotionally good and very emotionally charged storytelling. This is really, really good stuff. Like I said, it's not the best stuff in the world when it comes to X-Men, but take it for what it is and just enjoy it. There and if I had to give the three-parter overall a scale a score of from one to five, I give it I'm gonna be nice. I'm actually gonna give it a four. I'm going to be extra nice to it and give it a four. That's my honest, that's just being, just calling it like I see it. It's it's not perfect, but it is, it was a really good read. That's just my opinion. Well, that's all I got for this video. There will be more coming for Dark Avenger Inc. Plus, I promise. I uh, hope you enjoyed this review. Give me some feedback. Let me know what you thought. Please subscribe to Dark Avenger Inc. Plus. You won't regret it. Uh, don't forget about my channels as well as everybody else on here like you know Mark Chloe, Fast Stack of Comics, of course my bro the Mount Vernon Kid and J. Al Ghoul. Uh, thanks for watching everybody and until next time I'll see y'all later.